Taryn Taylor by Carl Behrman is a piece that clarinetists will stumble across eventually. It's also for saxophone in the Rubank Advance Volume 1 book. So it's Allegra Vivace, so fast and lively, and it will sound a little bit like this. <laughs> Okay, so I got a sick of doing repeats. So let's explain a few things here, and ignoring some of my technical faux pas. We have an amp bar phrase. Now, you'll hear a lot of recordings where like, everyone keeps chopping up the phrases. So you got da ga da da ga da da ga da da and then people breathe. da ga da da ga da da ga da 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 ga da da ga da da ga da 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 ga da da ga da 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 And it's, it chops it up too much. What you want is to take a massive breath of air, get your macro shapes for what is the major phrase. Now, I didn't breathe at all. Now, let's say you do need to breathe. You still want to treat it as if you're taking the momentum to the end of that 8-bar phrase. See, so I breathe very quick, but I'm trying, I'm taking that breath with the express intention that I'm going to keep on going, right? You have to make it feel like I'm, this is not a stopping point. I'm going for that eight bar phrase. Then there's repeats. There's so many repeats. Let's just ignore the repeats. And we have another eight bar phrase. Don't breathe. Keep on going. Okay, so that's the end of the eight bar phrase. Now, we have a rhythm, a dotted quaver, semi-quaver rhythm, then uh, like a triplet feel, because we're in 2-4. So it goes 1-e and a 2 and a 1 and 2. This is not swing, so it's not going to go da-da-da-da-da-da-da. It's going to go da 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 Now, students will start this slowly. So because they're starting slowly, it exposes this rhythm. <laughs> oh, so low. So that semi-quaver is almost a grace note into that triplet. <laughs> However, at speed, it's, it's kind of all going to disappear. But as long as you tr know how to go into this with the knowledge that this is a semi-quaver going into a triplet, you'll get that sharpness and crispness when we ramp up the speed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And then we keep on going, we've got this up and down, up and down. But again, these are eight bar phrases. Now I always like expanding out the dynamics quite a bit. And there's some mezzo staccato there. So when you see a slur in staccato, that's not some kind of weird contradiction. That's a mezzo staccato. So mezzo meaning, you know, medium. So mezzo Piano, mezzo forte, medium loud, medium soft. So what we have here is a mezzo staccato. Not like ridiculously staccato. Just, you know, kind of. And then our tune comes back. And it keeps on going. Now we have a key change. We bring back the dotted quaver, semi quaver rhythm. Um, here, tune, 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 tune. Um, at the end. And then the tune. Okay, here, the ending is a bit more dramatic, so we have. 
So that's when you get to let rip. So you got your tune, it's you know gone loud, gone soft, gone loud, gone soft. At the end there, we just get some nice, good, dramatic. Oh. oh, me and those low notes on the saxophone. All right, so maybe I'm more of a clarinetist on the saxophone player, but anyway, that's the idea. The other thing of note. This piece requires a metronome. Let's just slow that down a little bit. This will be one of the first, like, really technical pieces that a student might get that is a really requiring you to keep that metronome. So, it'll be surprising to the student at which points they accidentally go too fast or they accidentally start falling behind. This piece is actually quite rigid in the tempo and it's actually quite tricky. Let's see if we can pick up the metronome. You know, let's make a challenge. <laughs> it's got 144. Okay. And see how suddenly you realize, wow, this is thing is this is clockwork. Okay, so you can see there's lots of opportunity for this to completely unravel. So for the student, you want to put this metronome way down. You want to go to here. You want to take the hard parts and just work on this. Just just try and tick along with that metronome. You want to be very mechanical for something like this. Otherwise, you'll just get speed wobbles and fall off. So don't do what I'm doing and just go to hell with all the mistakes. For this piece to really actually be mastered, you have to just think really, really technical. And that's why this is like a grade five clarinet piece.